Hello, hello, and welcome to the Healthy Be Human podcast. My name is Callie. I'm your podcast host, and I'm so excited to have you here today listening wherever you are, if you're walking, working, driving in the car, whatever, welcome. I'm so excited you're here, my queen. All right, so if you're new to the podcast, we always start things off with a little self-check-in. This is just a time to reflect, to ground yourself if you're having a really chaotic, busy day, or if you just need to like take a second and see how you're feeling. So wherever you are, I want you to take a big inhale through your nose, fill up your lungs with lots of goodness, lots of confidence and love into your beautiful body. And then on your exhale, slowly open your mouth, sigh it out, letting go of anything that's holding you back, any tension, just let it go. Okay, now I want you to ask yourself, how am I feeling on a scale of one to 10? 10 being I'm feeling literally amazing, one being, okay, not so hot today. And now a little follow-up question, why do you feel like that? Maybe something happened, maybe nothing happened, just becoming present with yourself here. All right, now I want to ask yourself, what is one big goal you have for this week? Something that's going to help you level up and become the best version of you. Just take a moment and think about it for a second. Okay, hold on to that thing. And now I want you to ask yourself, what is the first step that I can take today to making this goal slash dream happen? It could be a baby step. Maybe you want to start a podcast. Okay, the first step could be, let's look up how to start a podcast and read an article. It can be as easy as that. Okay, now I want you to ask yourself on a less, what's the word? L- lighter note, I guess? I don't know. Um, have I drink water in the past 30 minutes? Grab your water wherever you are. Press pause if you need to go grab a water. We're going to chug our water and hydrate your hot bod in three, two, one. Cheers, my queen. You guys, I've been mega dehydrated the past few days. I think my water chugging is going to be every 15 minutes today. (laughs) We're going to make it even, even more frequent, okay? Now, ask yourself, have I stood up in the past 60 minutes? If you have not, stand up, shake at the legs, shake at the arms, get the blood blowing. Sedentary is less than, less than symbol. All right, and sit back down or continue to stand, whatever feels, whatever feels good, okay? Now, I want you to ask yourself, what is something that I really love about who I am? It could be your care, caringness. I don't think that's a word. How much you care for other people. It could be your laughter. It could be your joy. It could be your confidence, all the things. So just think about that thing you love about yourself. Hold on to it. And now I want you to tell yourself, I love who I am and who I'm becoming. Speak it out into the world, declare it, and really feel that, just that love for yourself here. Be your best friend. I always say it, be your best friend, okay? Now, final question in a little self check-in. I want you to envision who you want to be in 10 years. I know that's kind of far away, but just, just think about it. Who do you want to be in 10 years? Closing your eyes if you can, just imagining this version of you. Where are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? And most importantly, how are you feeling? Really focusing on that feeling that you are experiencing in the future version of you. And I want you, as you continue your week and your day, just to start to do more things that create this feeling. If the feeling you were experiencing was just that feeling of freedom or confidence or lightness, what are things you can do and integrate into your life that are going to create that feeling? Just start to think about it, okay? I hope this check-in made you feel good. I hope it made you feel more just present with yourself and grounded if your day has been a little chaotic. I know sometimes I need to self-check-in all, like most, most days I need to self-check-in. So take the time. You deserve it. And I'm glad you enjoyed. Okay. Wow. Today's episode, we have a guest, and I am so excited for this guest on our show. I don't have a ton of guests on the show, so I am pretty selective, and this guest is actually one of my friends, so you guys probably know if you've been listening for a while that I lived in New York City for 
five months. It's actually wild to me because my lease in New York would have renewed a couple days ago. And I'm like, so much has happened in one year. It's actually insane to me. If you're listening, I don't live in New York anymore. I moved to Florida. I went on this whole cross country road trip. I got engaged. I got married. Like so much has happened. You guys, I have another dog. I don't even know. So much has gone down in one year. It's actually insane to me. Sometimes I'm just like, can life, like life is flying by. And I'm like, kind of, can we slow down a little bit? But all good things. I'm so thankful. And Anyways, in New York City, I was going through, there was a lot of growth that went down in New York City. I was really going through it in New York City. I was not feeling like my best self, but New York was amazing because I found this church that really, really helped me take the next step in my journey with growing closer to God. If you guys have listened, you know that I pressed pause on my relationship with God for like four, four four-ish years, a little bit more than that. And it was my, it was last October is when I really started to encounter the Lord again. And I started to ease back into going to church. I'd had really weird experiences with church in the past. And I had a weird like relationship with church and I was nervous to go back. And so when I found church of the city in New York city, if you guys live in New York and you want to find a church, church of the city is absolutely amazing. I recommend it literally such a great, awesome community of people as well. I found a lot of friends in the church and that was really cool. Having a community group in New York city where if you live in like a southern state or somewhere where like being a christian is pretty much the norm it's kind of part of the culture i lived in a place where it was like that and church was just a thing that everybody did so when i moved to new york city it was interesting because it wasn't that same culture and so the people that were going to church were making this active decision to go to church every sunday going to community groups like it was a different it was a different vibe it wasn't so oh i have to do this to be accepted in culture more of oh like this is this is my lord this is my father like we're going to go to church and i love church and all this stuff that was really really cool to experience that differentiating version of just church culture so i love church of the city and kim is actually one of my friends i met through the church she this is actually a really funny story you guys i don't want to make this intro too too long because the episode is packed with so much goodness I was teaching, if you guys remember this, I was teaching in New York City, Umbala, Bala, if you don't know, is ankle weights. They have really cute like fitness equipment. They had a pop-up store in Soho for a second in New York, and I was teaching Pilates classes with Bala. So it was one of the classes Kim and her friend walked in and I believe they took my, yeah, they took my class and I didn't know them. Afterwards, they came up to me and they asked me, they were like, we were just chatting and somehow it came up oh do you go to church like no idea they had no idea I was a Christian at all I was wearing a cross necklace but that doesn't really mean you're a Christian if you're a cross necklace necessarily and they asked me and I was like yeah I actually go to church of the city you guys these girls literally went to church of the city also and it was just really cool because we ended up becoming friends Kim was in my community group and she's really really inspiring and I remember we had one time we are going on a walk through Central Park and I just opened up about a lot of things I was struggling with. It was like our second time hanging out and I was nervous because I wasn't sure how she'd react or like I just I was still really struggling with caring what people thought a lot and I was worried she would judge me for what I was sharing with her and she ended up just being a really good friend and giving me some really good advice and listening to me and being there for me and so I'm really excited to have her on quick updates though if you guys don't already know this I am starting to look for houses to buy which is crazy if you didn't know I'm currently renting a house and so I'm starting the search process. Our lease doesn't end until like November, I think, November, December. So we got some time, but we're starting the process of looking at houses and it's been really fun. So all good things. Also, I've been working really hard on merch for you guys. So a little plug there. I've been wearing the sweatshirts actually nonstop. I've been testing them out, trying to make sure the quality is good, all those things. And I cannot wait for you guys to see those merch. Like literally I'm obsessed. So other than that, I mean, also I'm planning a wedding too. I know I mentioned I'm married. We did a little small ceremony with our family like a month ago. We are still having the big ceremony though in November. So we're in 
big wedding planning mode and I finally have my bachelor at party group what's it called bridesmaids I have all my bridesmaids so that's exciting and then I'm starting to think about the bachelorette and if you guys have any recommendations for places to go for that let me know because I'm trying to figure out like a cute city to go to and I want to have like a wholesome wholesome vibes you know like some fitness some spa some good food good laughs good convos all those things some beach beach would be nice but yeah that's the update so let's get into things okay so for anyone who doesn't know Kim just a little background on our friendship I when I was living in New York City for a hot second I ended up meeting Kim at my church there and we became really good friends while I was living there. And she has a super cool brand that I want her to tell everyone about. And we're going to also touch on things, all things navigating your 20s kind of episodes, super chill. So I thought it'd be really fun to have a friend on. So Kim, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? What do you do? All the things. Okay. I am just so excited, first of all, to be on this podcast. It's my first official podcast. Um, and to be doing it with you, Callie, is just so special. Um, yeah, so Callie and I met last year when she was in New York. I miss her so much, y'all. Like, I don't even think I understand. I need her back in the city because now that it's like sunny and like good weather now, I'm like, okay, it's your time to come back now. <laughs> we escaped the cold, but come back for the summer. But anyways, yeah, so I'm from Dallas, Texas area. I've always lived in Texas. Um, went to Texas A&M University, so did not get out, branch out much until my move to New York City and so I moved I guess now a little over a year ago kind of like in March of last year and um, it's just always been my dream to live in New York uh, for just like a little bit of time just to get the experience ever since I was like eight years old and I came here I was like just in shock and wow like everything here and it has not disappointed my experience here so far. So I've absolutely loved it. I've loved all the people I've met. Um, but yeah, so basically my junior year of college, I was in this program at my school for accounting and like, um, it was like a master's program. And basically you like recruit for where you want to um, work at. And so like everyone in this program was like doing obviously like Dallas, Houston, Austin. And I was like just there by myself at these recruiting events, like going on my own for New York. It was like just me. And I was like, nope, I'm still going to do it. I still like it's still my dream. I still want to um, try for it. So I did all my interviews for the Northeast for New York and I got one. Um, And that's where I'm working at still currently. And yeah, that's what got me here. I love it. And so a little bit about that, how... So obviously you got out of your comfort zone a lot because everyone else at your school was kind of staying within the bubble, which is fine. But like, I want to hear more about what got you to take that leap of faith of moving across the country. Yeah. So I think like for me, like I knew I wanted to get an experience. I didn't do a study abroad. Um, I didn't go out of state for school, which I like had to apply. I got accepted to a lot of out of state schools and I just like didn't feel like it was the right timing yet. And I just know it was like truly the Lord who was like having me wait, like go to A&M, have this program be set up where I could interview for New York and make that dream happen. And so I was like, okay, I just felt like everything was like in the right place, like right time. And I don't, I think the Lord just like gave me like, an, just like so much like excitement and just readiness to just meet people, which like can be scary because like coming here, it's like, you're starting all over again. Like, yes, in college, like you had the freshman year, but like, it's still like, similar people like from Texas, like you're coming from the same kind of schools, high schools, like everyone kind of knows each other, mutual connections. New York, it's like, I came in here and like, didn't have like one of my like tight close friends here. It was all like mutual friends, or, like connections of connections um, kind of thing. And just like going out and meeting people. And so it was like definitely for sure a leap of faith, but it has like honestly helped me like grow so much as a person, just like being able to like meet people and like make connections and just like grow my perspective, like the world and like the people. Um, So yeah, I definitely just think it was like, obviously the Lord first of all, and then also just having like my family and friends support, like go for it, do it. And also like, I think you can do anything for a year. Like if it, I know that's been said, but like you really can like, just like going out and getting the experience. Like you're going to, if it's a good experience or bad experience, you're going to learn something either way. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love it. So in terms of making friends, what are some things that have been working for you? Obviously we made, we, we made, that didn't make sense. We became friends (laughs) through the church, but other than that, what else has been helping you? 
Okay, like honestly, when you for anyone out there moving to a new city, like if you're trying to make new friends, you don't know people, like connections, like it's like a job. Like I'm not even kidding. It was like my side job. Like I would work <laughs> and then like I was going to like three Bible studies like a week at first. Like I was going to the one. I remember that. (laughs) I was like going to that one Wednesday. Tuesday had like an all girls one. Wednesday was the co-ed. And then Thursday was like a different co-ed one. Like one time I ended up in one that was like way up in like Harlem or somewhere. And I was like, what? I don't know. Anyways, I put in a lot (laughs) of work. I will say just to like meet people like at these things because like even if like you don't connect necessarily with someone at that bible study they might have a friend that they invite you to something to later and then you meet that friend and you all become like really good friends and like connect more so it's really just like having the motivation and effort to like put yourself out there um and just go to things that like you genuinely enjoy like whether it is church or like oh spin workout class or just like really there's so many opportunities in like new york especially but just to like find those places where like you want to like dive into um, things that like bring you joy. And then those people have like the same, you know, interests as well. So I definitely just think like, actually you have to like put in the effort for sure to do it. Um, but then it's like, so it's so worth it once you like do make those like lifelong friends that like, it's so crazy like to meet friends now that I'm like, I didn't even know a year ago, but now like you're going to be for sure like a lifelong friend, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I love it. Cause even for, yeah, when I was in New York city, it was like, I remember I joined like Facebook groups and I'd be messaging people all the time. And I, I think I went on like three coffee dates in one day. It was crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like texting, like, Hey, do you want to go on a walk? Like I just got the number. So like, want to go on a walk, like want to go on a coffee date, which I didn't even drink coffee, but yeah. How was your first latte oh by the gosh. way? Yeah, <laughs> okay. So I've never had coffee before. <laughs> like I was being so dramatic I was like oh my gosh guys like I'm having my first coffee tomorrow like making it a huge thing but so like okay so like five of my like really like close best friends from Texas came and visited me and I wanted to like make it a special little thing to remember the trip that when they came and visited so we went to like Ralph's coffee um which is like the cutest little coffee shop if people don't know um and yeah I got my first coffee there and it was great. I got a vanilla latte, half sweet with almond milk. And it was great. It was honestly a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It kind of reminded me of hot chocolate a little bit. But yeah, it was an experience. I think I did have actually a little bit more energy than normal. I don't know how much, but I think it did do something. When I had my first coffee, I remember it so distinctly because I was in, it was my freshman year of high school and my school I went to had a coffee shop at it. It was kind of like really low-key bougie. And <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what high school has a coffee shop in it looking back? But anyways, it was so good. And I remember in between classes, I went to this coffee shop and I got, it was like a vanilla latte and I didn't realize how much caffeine it had in it. And so I chugged this thing right before math class. And I remember I was like writing and my arm was physically shaking and I was like, what's going on? Like, am I okay? And I felt so like rebellious having coffee too, because I never had it in my entire life. And I remember this, it was, yeah, it was so funny. (laughs) Wait, did you get it iced or like the hot? I think it was hot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I tried the iced one too. And I think I kind of like that one better. I don't know. Cause it was like hot outside. So I was like, okay. I feel like, yeah, I love coffee. I'm a big coffee gal. Do you you drink it every day? Like, it depends. I go through phases with it. I mean, today I had coffee, but sometimes if I like, I don't want to be addicted to it. Cause like I've gotten addicted to it before and I'm like, I don't want to like rely on this to feel normal energy. So mm-hmm. I just love how it tastes. Like it's so I've gotten to the point where like, I love it. And John is super, super into like craft. Co- I don't know if it's called craft coffee or whatever, but like super fancy coffee. And so we've gotten into making like pour over coffee. He likes it. It's called AeroPress coffee. It's we like grind it's kind of like a lot but it's really fun so i love which is that what you have like like what do you make like for every day like pretty much pour over every day i grind the beans in our grinder and then i make a pour over oh my gosh you have a little coffee shop i know yeah come come to our coffee shop we will we'll introduce you to all the wonders of the coffee world (laughs) i know i like you to like try like different things like i just tried when i was in new hampshire this past weekend i tried like a little bit of my friend's cold brew and i was like this is oh cold brews will gotcha yeah i only had like a sip of it but i was like this is not tasting i think it's maybe an acquired taste i don't know (laughs) so working on my coffee skills I love that you finally have branched out and tried coffee. I'm proud of you. 
<laughs> but moving on a little bit, I want to get into anyone who maybe just graduated college and is starting a new job. How was your adjustment to the corporate world out of college? Yeah. So for me, so I, like I had said earlier, I was in a master's program. So I had like one extra year where I like finished up my classes and like took my CPA I'm in accounting. So I did my CPA exams. And then after that, I had like a short little time. And then I started um, work in January remote actually um, for this job that I'm at now in New York. But yeah, just starting out, I feel like I went into it and had like so much like excitement energy. Like I was like, I'm going to grind it out. Like I just took all these CPA exams and like, st- like this could be, this is so much better than studying. And like, I'm actually like making money. I'm actually like, like putting things to action um, that I like learned. And so I was like full force, like grinding the late hours. Cause it was like, we're de- in busy season when I started and yeah, it was like fine for me. Um, I think cause I had just come off of studying such intensely for exams that I was like, Oh, this is so much better than studying which and anyway, that's a whole other thing. But <laughs> anyway, so yeah, but then I feel like as the time has gone on, I'm like, hmm, I'm wanting more of like a relaxed, you know, situation. I'm like, I don't know if I have that full effort, but I feel like I have been like convicted in this and I'm like, I got to stop like just thinking about like all the negatives like in the work environment to be like, thank you that I even have a job that I'm working, that I'm able to work, I'm able to understand and comprehend what I'm doing. And like, this is like obviously a classic verse, but like do whatever you do like to the glory of God. And like for like for full effort, I feel like I need to be putting into it, even when it like time goes on and it's like, okay, like where's my like summer vacation time? Like I'm out of school. Like I need like a break, like summer, but um, no, I'm thankful for who I do work with. Like it's a great team and everything. And like one of my like um, senior people, like someone that she had told me was just, like be proud to present like the work that you're doing to like your higher up. So like for me, it's like presenting it to like my senior senior manager and like taking full responsibility of your work and like being so proud to show that. So like that can be like with anything that you're doing, but like if you're presenting your work, like you want to be proud of that. So do that, have that same mindset of like when you're in the work world, like you want to like give your full effort and like your full potential into this because this is where you are at right now. And so you might as well like, give your full effort and like people will be able to see, um, you know, just that you are putting in your full potential and everything. And I think that just shows like how you are not only as like a coworker, but like as a person, it's like, okay, this person's like really, you know, wanting to just put their best foot forward and like put their full effort in. So just like being proud of like everything that you are like producing and like passing up to like, for me, like starting up like higher ups and everything. I love it. So true. So in terms of balancing work, life, friendships, personal health, God, all those things. Do you have any tips for just kind of finding that? I mean, if there is a balance. I know. <laughs> I've got, like, I'm in like a wheel of things. I'm like, ah. my daily struggle. Um, I'm like, how do I balance? Yes, my how life? do you like, keep it all together? I'm like, cause I'm supposed to be getting this amount of steps and this amount of sleep and doing <laughs> and making myself this for breakfast. Like it's just a lot. Um, but I would say, I would think just like obviously like prioritizing things in your life of like, this is something that I'm not going to like slack on. Like for instance, like for me, that's like church or like community growth groups. Like, no, like I'm not going to slack on that. Like maybe I'll slack on this extra like fun event that I got invited to or like a friend going on a walk. Like, no, I have to like let that go so I can have this time for this thing. So you have to like first, like make sure like, you know, like what things you're like not going to like budge on. Mm -hmm. I would say that. Um, And then also like for balancing and like, or to make even kind of going back to the last question question of like making like life enjoyable in work, it's just kind of like maybe seeking out things that you enjoy, like at your workplace. Like for me, um, our work actually offers like volunteer events. Like there was like a Harlem event where we got to like go out um, and help children like prepare for like interviews and stuff at the Harlem Academy. Um, and then also like a cycling event that was like after work, like a free soul cycle event that was like outside. It was really fun. But like, there's like multiple of these events that pop up all the time. And it's like seeking those out in, in your work, or even if they, your work like doesn't offer that, um, maybe like even you suggesting it. Like, I know like we're young, but like we can like offer those up to like people above us. And like, they like love to see like young people like wanting to like make positive changes for the work and like 
they know that that's going to help build like the team and the camaraderie and like it like when you meet and like talk to people like outside of work like there's like a deeper connection that you have and I think that really filters into the workspace so you can balance like having fun things happen during the week even if it's like through work like there's those opportunities and it really is about like having things to look forward to in the week I think um even though it can be like hard to balance but having those things like kind of set each week that you know are going to happen it just really helps it not become so like mundane cycle of everything um you know things just like look forward to yeah that and also like getting up early I'm like I and I am bad at it but I've been trying to become more of like I just gotta wake up and go for it you know yeah I've I'm the same way I recently learned just adding hobbies into life makes everything's so much more fun I mean a lot of people grow up doing sports as kids or doing some sort of out of school activity and I don't know why but as adults I feel like that's just kind of removed from our life and we need more of it and I I started picking up different hobbies like I started surfing I started longboarding and it's like so much fun and you don't have to make money doing everything that's no I else. know exactly yeah like do things that bring you joy like honestly and then that's what really matters but yeah I've been seeing you're like surfing like where I'm like oh my gosh oh I'm it's <laughs> it's when life. you come down here you need to you need to try I, if I try to do surfing though I'm gonna be like like flat on my back like so <laughs> but, yeah, just bad but another thing also that I thought of is what I've been doing like now is like really focusing on taking Sunday before the week like to be like my Sabbath and I feel like before like in college and even high school like I did not have that kind of mindset and we like forget that this is like a commandment like to remember the Sabbath day keep it holy and not only like for that reason but just like having this set day where like I'm because I used to like be working out and like doing things but like now like I don't work out on Sundays like I don't feel that or have that day for like Aaron's day where I'm like just running around like getting a Mm -hmm. bunch of like stuff but like trying to spread that out more like maybe do it on Saturday or something but like having that day really just to kind of like rest and chill and like kind of like think about the week think about like what I want my plans to be um for the next week and like spending time like obviously with the Lord and stuff but just like having that day because I was really getting convicted like I'm starting to get into the cycle of things here and it's so easy like because we're young, we want to do all these fun things and you know, these people and like, especially in New York, there's always an event going on or something you can go to, as you know, especially (laughs) with everything that you have. But it's just like, I was getting so convicted. I was like, I can just like easily get into this like mindset, like doing one thing after another before, you know, it's like months have passed. It's like, what have I done? That's like actually like meaningful and like things like that. So yeah, just definitely um, taking like a day to just kind of think and reflect on the previous week, spend time like personally like with yourself and with the Lord, um, or let me look like with you, um, and then preparing like for the next week. But just having that day, I think is so crucial. Yeah, I started, I also was really convicted about that as well. I was working, like, I mean, working social media, it doesn't stop. So I felt like I have to keep working on Sunday and posting things. And I felt convicted about it because I wasn't taking a day to just take a step back and rest and it's been changing the game I've been doing it for several months now and it's honestly been so needed and helped a lot with burnout especially and just like consistency during the week too because we all need breaks like we can't we're not robots we're not designed to constantly be going all the time no I mean and like and in New York there's like all these like Instagrams that are like NYC for free this week or like NYC events and I'm like always like looking at those stories and I'm like oh, this is going on. Like, didn't know I needed to go down to Soho to get- Oh, the FOMO in New York City is- Why am I going? Yeah. So (laughs) definitely like that is like, you just can't get into that cycle of things. And so like also like prioritizing for me is like um, wanting to like actually like volunteer and serve um, in the community of New York, just because like, I don't just want to like have my time. So I know I'm not here, like this is what I'm saying now, but like long-term. And so I want to like, have my time here to not just take whatever New York has to offer and give to me, but to like give back. And that can be for any city, but like not just take what the city has to offer, but to like give it, like give back to it and like make it better than like when you, even if it's a small way, but you know, just like having a Saturday where you're like, okay, this Saturday of every month, like I'm going to go serve here or do this. Um, mm, I love that. So like filling time with actions that are matter. You know, that's, that's awesome. I love that so much. 
Um, speaking of giving back, I feel like that was a perfect transition. So I want you to tell everyone about Kikarko. So how did you start your brand and what is it and how can people get involved? (laughs) So, okay. So first of all, Kikarko, the name is just for, it's shortened for my full name, which is Kimberly Caroline Cobb. So it's just, yeah. So it's like the little breakups of each. So cute. I I don't know. It just kind of popped into my head for that one. But anyways, the meaning behind everything. So in my sophomore year of college, my mom was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, which basically is breast cancer, but metastatic means that it has spread. So it spread to a lot of areas of her body. Um, And the first steps we took actually were doing radiation, um, like on her spine, her brain, um, going straight into it, um, radiation, um, But yeah, so we did that and that was like kind of the start of it. I was trying to balance like college life and like tests and exams. And then also like knowing back home, my mom was going through all this. So it was really felt like I was living kind of two separate lives of just everything going on. But um, yeah, I had a great um, support system though with both family and friends. So anyways, this wasn't until my master's year. I was talking about my fifth year. Um, I like had the idea of just like, I don't know. It was just like a lot of negatives that come from just disease and cancer, especially. And I was like, what is something I can do that somehow like brings a light to the situation, brings awareness, like help people feel connected. And this was kind of around the time when like the claw, like hair clips started really like becoming a thing, which I don't even think it's like a, there she is right there. Um, <laughs> like a, just a trend. Like I think this is here like to stay, like they are so essential now to everyone. I all the girls who are wearing them, but yeah. So I was like, okay, like, what can I do with this? Like, I know a big thing that my mom and I went through, um, was when we went through the experience of her losing her hair. Cause she, after radiation, we went to chemo, um, around a bit and she lost all her hair. And it was just like such a shock to see your mom, like lose her hair, you know, like all your life you've grown up with her having like beautiful like hair that she has and it's thick and anyway so we had that experience and it was really hard for her like she is like a, the strongest woman of faith and everything but even like if you have the strongest faith like you still get like those insecurities and like feel down about like something that's physical and that was just really hard for her just to see her like face change like that because I mean imagine yourself bald it's like it's a whole other thing so yeah um yeah I went to the process of like wigs and caps and all this stuff but anyways um I thought about that experience and I was like, you know, I am just so thankful that I have my hair. And I was just thinking about it, like, as we were going through that and like, I would get like a bad knot in my hair, like my hair is thick. So like, it takes forever to dry and blow dry. And so I'm like, oh, I'm so annoyed of like, blah, 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 or like just something bad hair day, you know? And I'm like, why am I even having these thoughts? Like, no, I'm thankful that I even can put my hair up, that I have hair, that it's here. So yeah, that was kind of the idea. And so these claw clips, Most of them, there's different sayings, but like the main clip that started um, or the ones that say thankful I can engraved on the hair clip. Because I thought something that was different was I hadn't seen really any clips that have any type of wording or engravement on them. And so I was like, okay, I want to put these words on there. So yeah, they say thankful I can to be a reminder, thankful that you have hair to clip up, clip back to wear in your hair, like just thankful that I even in here with my hair, but not only that, but thankful that I have the health that I do, that my family and loved ones have the health that they do. It's just like a constant reminder, like, cause everyone's putting in every day, like you're just remembering and seeing that. So yeah, so a portion of the proceeds of the clips go to um, like helping with cancer research. And it's like different. So like, there's like that one that she showed as well as like a lung cancer one that goes like to lung cancer research and support. And then there's like a breast cancer one. Like I, um, was coming out with different ones for like different months. So like also like the colors kind of coordinated, like oh, lung cancer is like the ri- the ribbon for cancer for lung cancer is white. And so that's why that clip is white. And um, yeah, just like different things like that, different sayings. Um, there's like information about it on my website and everything. But yeah, I think everyone has had either directly or indirectly been impacted by cancer. Like, you know, someone, you know, it's someone directly close related to you there's someone. And it has been, I had no idea like how much of an impact that it would make on just not in my family, but like others, like people who I like have gotten to meet and like speak to at like my pop-up events or like when I'm just talking about it and 
um, yeah, just like people being like, so moved and feel like that they, they can just talk to me about like what they've gone through in their personal experience and just being like, yeah, I know this person. Or, yeah. My sister, or, like they just like tell their stories. And I think that's such a beautiful thing to like make a connection off of something that is such a awful disease and things that people have to go through, but just knowing that we have that connection um, and we can just spread a little bit of positivity uh, with that. So yeah. I love it. That's beautiful. And yeah, I've, I'll link it below so everyone can go and look and check out and support Kakarko. And so, wait, have you done pop ups in New York? I haven't in New York yet. So I've done oh my gosh, a lot you should. in Dallas. <laughs> I know. I need to start just like looking into like different like boutiques and places and just seeing kind of what's out there. I feel like it's a lot easier at home because I have my car and I can like pack all yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> product there but no that's definitely on my list now that like I'm starting to um have some time here in the summer I'm like okay that's like a goal of mine is to like try to get something set up here in the city because I would love to do that it would be so fun what was your mom's reaction when you first started um I think she was just like wow like I think she didn't also know about like the clips trend yet and then she was like wait I love this and she was really um excited about it and just like was really moved and touched that I did come yeah. up with that was like trying to bring a positive thing and now that her hair is like fully grown back which oh. is like such a beautiful thing um she like wears them now and it just like also reminds her like she's still um fighting the battle of cancer um but the fact that she has her hair back it just like is a reminder that you know she has made it through this part, this journey, um, like so far, like how far she has come and her strength and everything. And so I know it definitely means a lot to her. And um, like a lot of our family, like just um, supports her by wearing the clips too. And it's like, you know, like reminding her that they're thinking of her when they like see the clip and stuff. And so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine if I was in her shoes and I had someone start an entire brand. I'd be like, what? So sweet of you. Okay, so for anyone who maybe has someone in their life who is battling cancer, what is one way that they can they can support that person? And like what cuz I I know sometimes it can get hard to understand like how do I how do I comfort, how do I support? What's the best thing I can do for someone going through this? Do you have any tips for that? Yeah, I think like just in general, I know it can be like, you don't want to seem like, oh, I'm just coming out of, like, nowhere, like, just, like, texting them randomly. But honestly, it really means a lot when someone will just, like, out of the blue kind of, like, text me, like, hey, was thinking about you and your mom. Like, how is she doing? And um, just, like, kind of being there and, like, supporting in that way if it's, like, someone who's, like, related to someone who has cancer. Like, just, like, telling them that you're there for them that and remind them that you're praying because that is, like, yeah. really thing to just remind them of that but if it's someone like directly like to my mom for instance or like you know someone like that it's just honestly just being there with like just your support and love like in person I feel like that's like such a huge thing so like I was home a good amount um over winter break just to be home because we were starting a new pretty intense treatment and so I think just being home and being around her and like helping her go to um like some of her appointments and like driving and stuff like that just kind of like are going to the grocery store, like being like, Hey, like, what do you need? Like doing those like little tasks that um, are difficult for people to do. And like, they may not necessarily want to ask for, but like it honestly, like, especially for cancer, like it can be very um, hard on the body and like hard to like walk and move. And so just like kind of offering those things, like not waiting for them to like ask because sometimes, you know, they don't want to ask, but just kind of doing things and like something that um like friends uh, have done for us is just like dropping off like not even asking like hey like or you know like the classic text like if there's anything I can do for you just let me know it's like not just like saying that but like actually just doing something like don't even yeah. like ask is there anything I can, like just go out and say like if this was happening to me like what would I want okay I would love mm. like someone to drop me off like nectar green juices and like we've had people do that for my mom like just leave it at the front like front doorstep because she has to really be in check with like getting greens and like healthy things in her body so like knowing you do like everyone just knows that so like going and just doing that like that's just so huge like you don't have to wait around to ask like hey like we're really in need of like a dinner tonight like can you like do that like, no one's gonna like say that you know so yeah that's so that's so true that's so true because I feel like if someone asks whenever I've been sick I mean obviously different very different 
thing. But like, yeah. if I've had a friend who's like, hey, do you need anything? I'm usually like, no, I'm fine. Yeah, you're always like, no, it's like fine. Like, I'm like no, it's there. fine. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry about it. But it means so much to you when they actually yeah. like, go and just think of something on their own and like do it and like write a little note or something and like Aww. whatever. Yeah. That's so sweet. And having that community of people who do that and are so caring, like that's that's huge. And that's amazing that you guys have that circle of people in your life. That's beautiful. Yeah, it is for sure. And like, obviously, like for me, like because faith is so important to me, just like, like showering them with like prayers and Bible verses, like I think is such a huge thing. And something special about New York is a lot of walking here. And so um, a lot of alone time in that, like just getting to yeah. places where like in the mornings, like if I'm going to workout class or just to work, like I've really taken that time. I feel like now to just like really if I'm not listening to your podcast I'm having like music in like worship music or something and just Aww. like really take that time to just like pray and like make it purposeful because we tell people all the time like I'm praying for you like I'll be praying for you for that but like how often do we take like set aside time to like really like, okay I'm focusing on praying for this like right now yeah and so I think like I, I know this isn't for everyone, but for like New York, just being able to like have that time of like walking, like I'm, I can't really do anything else. Like I'm making it a point to just like not listen to like some whatever music or podcast that's like, just like not going to be helping like build me up, but like taking the time to just like pray. Yeah. And, like, Even driving, sure. driving yeah, a car. That's true. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. That's really true. Yeah. Taking that time to be like, okay, this is like my set time where I'm going to use this to like pray specifically so for someone who doesn't know how to pray what is the your best like what helps you really feel connected to God through prayer yeah I think just like it's really just like talking to someone like you're talking to your best friend like you're just telling them like I need to unload everything that's just happened like <laughs> let me just gonna dump you everything on you right ready. now I know you know everything, but let me just reiterate it all to you. So like <laughs> talking to them like that, like it's not like it has to be some thing where it's like, oh my, I have to like actually make it like an official prayer. Like just talk to him, just talk to him about like what's going on. And like um, also just like writing down when people do like ask for prayer requests, like having that like in a journal or something. And then you can go back and be like, Lord, like I have these requests that people have asked me, like even people who are not even like, of faith like they'll often ask like I have people like be like can you pray for this for me like um or just like people asking for prayer like in general like people like I feel like do that a lot who aren't of faith and so you just like write those things down and then you just say like Lord like I know these things um I've listed like I lift these up to you and you can go one by one and just like pray like it's like as if you were telling your friend like hey my mom is going through this like, I don't know what to do. I'm feeling this way. She's feeling this way. She has these aches and pains, like just telling them and telling Lord, like, but please, Lord, like the cool thing about like versus a friend versus God, like, but please, Lord, like bring change that bring restoration, bring healing over that. And so with God, he can, he's actually the one who can make those changes. So like yeah. how that, that we can like actually say that to the one who can heal and bring that healing. So, yeah. yeah would say that. Have you ever had any cool like healing moments happen um yeah I've actually I've gone to I've been on some mission trips before um and like obviously like, I've seen like friends and family like come out of like um some hard times here but I just remember like a couple times like um like Indonesia when I was there just like hearing and seeing like people whose like eyesight was being restored and like, I mean, like we like prayed over like this woman who had like she wasn't able to sleep in a bed for like years and like her daughter became our friends and we went over there to her house one day and we like just like pray that there was like healing healing over her like her spine and her back and she was able to like sit up like more than she like had ever had in years she slept on the bed for the first time that night in like years because she was sleeping like on this cot on the floor and it was just like wow like that was like the first time I had like prayed over someone and they had been like healed and like restored and I was like wow like this is actually so powerful like it just like fires you up for sure and you're like and you just know that's why like, I feel like has really helped like my faith my mom so I'm like I know that he can bring that complete restoration healing like I've seen it I've heard it yeah. and about it and so yeah it, it it really does just impact you so much seeing stuff like that yeah it's I because I so I think the first time I ever had really experienced healing was 
when I first went to the church in New York City because they had a sermon. I was watching a it night actually, night and they had a healing thing. Yeah, it was this guy. It was like a guest pastor or something, and they prayed over this guy who had a broken leg, and apparently he walked out with like his no cast on his foot like totally normal and that was the first time i was like wait what that still goes out like that still happens in this day and age and the church i go to now is oh my gosh it's like so holy spirit led it's absolutely incredible and the second week i was there i experienced some really really cool healings myself just with anxiety and depression like i felt something actually released from my mind and I didn't struggle with anxiety since like, and cause I mean, I left New York city because I was really struggling and I didn't tell anyone. I mean, I like didn't tell you, I didn't tell anyone that I was going through it when I was like really in like a dark place. And it was like the second week of this church, they have people who can pray over you. And it was like, I felt really convicted and called to just, I was nervous. I was resisting going up and having prayer. And I was like, you know what, we're going to do this. I was like shaking and they prayed over me and they cast out the spirit of anxiety and i literally felt like just like this thing and then ever since that even john noticed he's like you seem like a different person like there's there's like a weight just released and i couldn't stop smiling that entire day and i was like yeah you're really great that is so amazing so this was at your church now and yeah it's insane they have like at first i was kind of skeptical because i was like this seems almost too good to be true kind of thing but yeah. i've been going for six months now and it is it, it's good it's too it's too good <laughs> but it is true so Wait, i love that i love that you found a church too that you just like feel so like good and comfortable oh in. my gosh it's incredible that that, like when it's like holy spirit feel like you see those things happen to you yeah like, it's like life changing for you that's so awesome yeah oh it God. was it's cool so you have to come visit you need to come oh. visit I'm for sure. Don't you worry. The last time I was in Miami was my um, senior year, our spring break before when COVID happened. And yeah. So we were like, every, the world was shutting down. We were in Miami. We were like, oh, we got to get out. I feel so. like so many people were in Miami when I was going down. I was, I, I'm actually about two hours north of Miami, but yeah. it's like, it's a totally different vibe. So you'll have to experience. Amazing. Okay. So before we go, first of all, thanks for coming on and like sharing your story. This is such a helpful episode. I feel like, I feel like sometimes, I mean, I know I worked in corporate for like six months, but I feel like it's so good to have other people who are like working actively like a nine to five job because it's a totally different challenge and your insights like amazing. So thank you because I know it's going to help a lot of people who are maybe struggling to feel happy in their job and are feeling like overwhelmed with it. Um, but where can people find you on socials and your brand and everything? Yeah. So for Kikarko, it's just at Kikarko on Instagram. And then for me, it's just at Kimberly Cobb underscore on Instagram. So yeah, but I can also like give you like my email or something if you want to like put it on like the notes or whatever, but yeah. no, I'm seriously here because I have had so many friends and um, just like other random people who have just gone through this um, battle like their mom or like a loved one who's like going through not only cancer, but like even just like any disease, like I get it. Like I, I totally get it. And so, yeah, I'm definitely here for anyone who's like struggling with that and just like not knowing what to do the next steps or like how to like balance life and like living two lives of like, you're going through this. And then also you're trying to be fun, like young, like I'm in my twenties. Like I want to have fun yeah. and be young and do fun things, but like, also like I have this really hard like life and death situation like kind of thing going on too so no. definitely open for any questions or like people just want to talk like i'm here for sure thanks again for listening to this episode i hope you absolutely loved it make sure to leave a nice review if you love this episode it helps so much it helps us reach more people all around the world and inspire and share light and love into this world also make sure you go check out kim on the socials hit her up email her reach out all those things and also go follow healthy but human pod on instagram where i post and promote all these podcasts with clips inspiring quotes, all the things. So go check it out. Other than that, my queen, keep shining. Have the best day ever. I'll see you next week and stay sweaty and healthy but human. Bye, my gorgeous queen.